Our next step is to create a component out of the rib that we just created. To do this, I'm going to make sure it's not connected to any other part of the model. So I need to zoom into the bottom here, use my pencil tool, and just draw a line there to kind of isolate that. I'm going to zoom out now and select the rib portion of my model. So I'm just going to drag from the lower right hand corner up to do that and you can see the whole thing is now selected. And then all I need to do to create a component is click the component button which is in the upper right of the toolbar. Now I get to name my component and I'm just going to call it rib. Creating components is a good idea because it will reduce your file size especially if it's something that you need to repeat often. It also just makes it a lot easier to copy and paste and move those specific elements. Now we need to make two copies of this component and you'll see why in a little bit. So for the first one I'll just call it rib and hit create and then with this I'll reselect it and hit make component again and I'm going to call it rib 2. Now the difference with this one is that I'm going to replace the selection with the component. And I'm going to go ahead and quit or hit create. I created two separate ones so that I could have a component that was easily editable and a component that could be associated with other components and you'll see what that means a little later on. Now what I would like to do is array this component along the edge of my base here. So I'm going to zoom in and to copy and array I'm going to use the move tool which is the four-sided arrow on the toolbar. I'm just going to click that and then when I hover over the screen you'll see at the very bottom of my screen it gives me some instructions for extra options with the move arrow. Normally with the move arrow you can just click and drag your component or whatever else you're moving anywhere. Gonna undo that. But what I would like to do is first copy this component and then move it around along a restricted axis. To do that, I need to follow the instructions at the bottom. So I'm going to hold my Option key or Control key for Windows users. So I'm going to click and hold the Option key and then also I want to lock the inference or keep it along this axis. So I'm going to hold the Shift key as well. So click, Option, and Shift down and I'm going to drag. And then I'm going to connect these corners so I just need to snap it to the endpoint of the other rib. Now before I do anything else, I'm going to type 26x and then hit enter. And you'll see it began to repeat this element. However many I wanted would be the number I typed, so, so if I wanted 10 I would type 10x, enter. And that is before you do anything else in SketchUp or it won't remember to do it. Now I'm going to zoom out here. And you can see that I quickly created a wall there. But I created way too many, so I'm just going to go ahead and select the last few and hit delete. After correcting the number of ribs, I need to pull these end pieces into posts that will support the crate. So to do that, I'm just going to hover over the corner piece and you can see that I have the dot pattern there. I'm going to pull it up using the push-pull tool and hover over an edge so it matches up with the height of my ribs. Now that I've got the right height, I want to extend it another 6 inches, so I'm just going to click again and type 6 inches and hit enter. Oops, didn't drag it up far enough. 6 inches and enter. There we go. Now I've got it. So it looks like that. Now with the other side, we have a slightly more complex situation. You can see that we have a rib overlapping the edge here. To fix this, we'll simply delete the rib. And then pull up 
the end post in the same way that we pulled the last one to the correct height. Simply hover and infer. Orbit a little bit more here. And we'll pull it up the six more inches. Now we have a gap that we need to fill. So I'm just going to zoom in and again use my protractor tool here. We'll connect it to the endpoint, snap it to the red axis, turn 90 degrees, typing that in, then I'll do the same to this point. Snap to the red axis, then 90 degrees, and enter. And you can see we now have guidelines for our infill. Just going to zoom out, get a better angle, and go back in. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Snapping to that edge. And then since it intersects an angle, we'll need to close the shape. Then we can pull it up to the 7.9 feet that all the other ribs are at. And when we zoom out, we have our completed wall.